Hey, welcome back to the channel. Back in the garage today. Uh, today we're going to be working on the Royal Enfield, uh, the Scram 411. Um, a little while back, uh, my daughter had a little bit of a spill. Um, I originally thought the uh, handlebars were a little crooked. Um, we straightened the forks and they seem to be all right. Uh, my daughter's never complained about them either. However, uh, the last couple times I've ridden it, it, they just, I don't know, they just, they just seem... A little off um, I don't know if it's because of me or <laughs> and I in my head I have it that they're crooked um, or if they actually are crooked um, originally I had already purchased the handlebar so I'm gonna swap them out anyways just to see if it makes a difference um, the weather's not that bad out right now so we do want to get out riding it a little bit more so I'm gonna actually go ahead and change the handlebar so anyways let's get into it So to start, a uh, six millimeter hex key to take off the end caps of the handlebars. That's one. And the other side. Set those both aside. Now we'll work on the uh, brake side. Um, it's just loosening up. Well, one, we'll take the, um, the brake lever off and then we'll take the um, kill switch and everything off. For the kill switch, um, it's just Phillips uh, head screws. There's just two of them. I don't know if you'll be able to focus in on that. Just loosen both of those off. So there's one there and there's one here. So for this, there's uh, the two bolts. Um, the small one's for the back of the bike and the long one is for the front of the bike. You'll be able to see w the way the backing is. That just comes off. You'll disconnect the throttle cable here. There. There's the uh, one handle grip. Um, yeah. So the throttle cable just actually just fits through there and sits in there. And that's what uh, spins it. So we have that piece off. Um, now it's just two it's 10 millimeter for both. Oh. I lied. 10 millimeters on the other side. So this side is 8 millimeter. This side is the 10 millimeter. Let's put those aside. So that's it for this side. Uh, now we'll start on the other side. So this is basically the same thing. Uh, this here, the two screws on the bottom, small one on the front, big one on the back. This is a spacer that's in it. Um, just put that aside so you know where it goes after. This side is the uh, 10 millimeter with the two bolts. These ones are a little loose. I don't think I tightened them properly the last time because we were having issues with the mirror being out of whack. Oh, actually, I lied. So this is more of a, of a clip style. So this one here, it, you're only taking off the, uh, the one bolt because you want to actually slide this right off because this here, the um, clutch lever you'll uh, take out. So you want to leave that one done up. You're only taking off the one and you don't, you can just loosen it off just so it slides uh, because when we loosen the clamps, we'll slide it out off the end. Now, this here is something I've never done is taking off one of these hand grips and if anyone's ever seen Royal Enfield they like to put a lot of glue on a lot of places I've seen a lot of people complaining about the Loctite that they use on the uh, the clamp here 
um, but you can see how much glue they've put on here. Um, I've seen two different ways of uh, getting this off. I'm going to try one of them that, right now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the screwdriver or the air. I'm going to try the air just because it might be cool if I can get my air compressor out. Anyways, let's get the air compressor out. So I lied. Um, I cleaned up the garage and I don't know where my uh, tools are now. Um, that's a lesson to all you young kids. Don't clean up your garage. You'll never figure out where everything is. The other way I've seen is getting a screwdriver wet and uh, just inserting it to one side. Keep going as far as you can. Now normally you could just cut this off and peel it off. Um, however, I don't have uh, replacement ones here, so I wanted to get it on today. So let's see if this will work. There. Well, that was a lot easier in the video that I watched than it is here. <laughs> so that will work. Um, it just does take in a little bit, a little bit of work more than I thought it would have. Um, but yeah, um, probably just better to buy these. These things are freaking cheap anyways. Um, but yeah, good enough. So now that we got that off, we can uh, undo the clamp. Again, this is a six millimeter. I've already had these loose, so I'm not worried about the Loctite on this. There, take the clamp off, put it aside. Then we can take the bars off. Actually, we need to... There's two clips for... Cables. So you don't want to do that. I just broke this off in there. Um, I'm sure it's fine. I'll figure out a solution after. And I don't know if it will bobble around too much. But I'm sure you can buy these clips from somewhere. Now let's get the new bars. Been over a year and I still haven't even taken it out of the box. My first ever parts from Royal Enfield and these are actual Royal Enfield genuine parts. That's uh, kind of nice. I just went with the exact same ones. Um, I didn't, didn't see the point in upgrading to anything else. These were I think like 50 bucks and that's coming right from India. So um, yeah. Let's see how bent the other ones are, or if they're even bent and it's all just in my head. So you can see, um, holding it all exactly the same way, um, over here it's fine. This is the side she went down on, and you can see the uh, the gap. So it was pulled back uh, a, a little bit. Um, not enough for her to notice or care, but uh, the few times that I drive it, it, it was bothering me. Um, I don't think it would really be a safety issue or anything. It's just more for a comfort thing. Um, so I'm glad we're deciding to change them in anyway. So let's get the new ones on. So for the new ones, we're just going to reverse putting them on. Um, I'm not going to tighten this down or, or anything right now. I'm just going to actually, before we do anything, you do need this one in first. So let's put that in. Put that on. Um, we're not going to clamp it all the way down. We're just going to put it on just to hold it so we can put everything else on. So just uh, loosely put these on.
So to be honest, I've seen op different ways of actually putting everything back together. Um, and really any way would actually work. Um, but in my mind, the way I think I'm going to do it is um, I'm going to put the handle grips on first. And the reason for that is I've seen everyone else put, you know, this tightened up, this tightened up that tightened up and then putting this on after. But the way I'm thinking is you want to put these in place to where they are um, and then go from there instead of putting these and then putting, because who knows if this is even far enough on. So I, I don't think there is a wrong way of doing it. It's just in my head, I can't understand why, why I wouldn't do it this way. So this is the way I'm doing it. Um, I don't have the owner's manual, so I'm not sure if this is the way they recommend doing it, but this is the way I'm doing it. I'm not putting any glue on this um, because it shouldn't really move around anyways, unless you're trying to make it move around. Um, you're going to put it in until the uh, there's a little ledge there. Um, like I said, I'm going to screw this down because this actually has an indent on it um, over top of it. And then I'm going to just push it out and that's where it's going to going to be. And that's going to be my marker. Again, I can't see this moving around very much. Um, if it bothers my daughter, I'll take it off again and I'll uh, put a little glue on it. But uh, for now, we're just going to see how she likes it like this. So I'm going to put this one on first. Okay, put that all the way out to the end. So the next is to put in the uh, high beam, low beam horn on here. Uh, there are two spacers that uh, come on it. Uh, the first one is for the top. Um, there's a little notch you can see. It just uh, slides right in here. Let's put that up there so it stays in. Um, the other one you can see it's basically for aligning the, uh, the bolts that go in. So it just goes in here. Oh. I guess I'm going to have to do it all at once. So again, to start, <laughs> this spacer here goes in right here so it's where your bolts are going in um, and this one here goes in the notch on the top here so it's uh you can't actually put it in wrong unless you don't know where it goes but um, if you know it's on the top you can't put it in wrong uh, line them up put them on and now they're ready for the bolts so again the long one of the uh, bolts goes on the front of the bike Help if I use the right hole. That's what she said. <laughs> and the little one is on the front. Now, again, don't tighten everything down here because you're going to have to get on the bike and kind of just uh, m maneuver everything around to kind of see where you actually do like it. Um, and for that, I won't bore you with it because I'm going to have to get my daughter out here. Um, it's her bike. She's going to have to tell me where she actually likes everything to be and we can move it around from there so they're just snug next is the uh, 10 millimeter for mirror assembly here i think that you usually like a little bit lower down i think that's probably gonna be decent I'll leave that there for her and then we'll uh, adjust it after and let's go to the other side. So again, I'm going to start with the, uh, the grip actually, again, just so I know whereabouts I want to align everything up with. So let's put this on. So again, the 10 millimeter or sorry, the uh, six millimeter Allen key. These are pretty cheap. I should actually just buy new ones 
get rid of that uh, little scuff up mark, eh? Maybe that'll be the next thing I purchase. So for this, um, if it doesn't come out for you, that's good. Um, but this does have a couple of the spacers in there. Mine didn't come out, um, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, so the first thing is, is actually to get the throttle cable into the notch for the throttle cable. Now there's probably an easier way to do it, but I'm too lazy to look it up. So the last time I did this, I just did it through the bottom. There. That. And the housing goes around. Two bolts again, uh, the big one at the front of the bike and the little one at the, uh, for the back of the bike. Okay, the main thing, you just wanna make sure there's no obstruction. And these, I'm not, again, I'm not gonna reef on them or anything right now because I do want my daughter to try them out to see which is the best position for her. Okay, now the brake lever and the last mirror. Now this again is the eight millimeter socket. Okay, just snug so she can do it up. And the last thing is just the, the clamp on here. Now, this you just want to make sure your it's centered on the, uh, the clamp. Um, there's some lines on it you can kind of gauge. Uh, you can measure it, but I can already see it's a little bit that way. So we'll just bring it over this way a little bit. That looks about the same. I'll just clamp it down right here. I am actually going to measure it because why the hell not? Looks pretty good. So there. It already seems uh, a lot straighter to me. Uh, we'll find out if my daughter thinks so. Um, but yeah, other than adjusting to where she wants them, forward and back, obviously it's all personal preference. Um, that's it. That's like uh, changing the handlebars on a Rolf Enfield uh, 411. Until next time, later. <laughs>